This all started about a year ago. I, a 23-year-old female, live on the second floor of an apartment complex and have lived here my entire life. The building is mostly comprised of families with young children and married couples. A lot of the families have lived here as long as my family has, so everyone knows each other pretty well. There is only one apartment unit that isn't occupied by a family, but rather by a pair of brothers who keep to themselves. One day, one of their sons, around my age, appeared out of the blue. He was strange off the bat. He would always wear a sweatshirt with the hood up and would run through the apartment complex to get to his apartment. I'm not sure what his face looks like because he always had the hood over his face. He lived on the first floor, on the back side of the complex, and would often go into his place by jumping through the window. He basically did everything in his power to avoid any interaction. I didn't mind him because I never saw him due to my busy schedule. However, one day, he started sitting on the top of the staircase that leads to my apartment. This was strange because his apartment unit was on the other side of the complex and on the first floor. I brushed it off at first, but it started happening every day. When I would come home from school, he was there. When my boyfriend at the time would drop me off at night, typically at around 10.30 to 11, he would be there. Sometimes, when I would leave and come back hours later, he would still be in the exact same spot as if he didn't move through the five plus hours I was gone. At this point, I told my parents and my boyfriend about it and they became very vigilant. My boyfriend would park his car and walk me to my door every night he dropped me off. Once he saw my boyfriend, he stopped sitting on the staircase and I thought it was over, but it wasn't. He started waiting for me at the bus stop. The bus I take home from school stops right across from the street from my home, so it's a short walk. One day when I was getting off, I saw him waiting at the bus stop. Once he saw me get off, he followed me into the complex and sat on the staircase. He also started following me when I would walk my dog. At this point, my parents were upset. My dog started letting the neighbors know he was following me around. My neighbors started making sure he wasn't bothering me if I was alone. They would start a conversation with me until I got into my door. One day, I got a friend request on Facebook from this guy. Mind you, he had never spoken a word to me, so how did he know my name, let alone find me on Facebook? My mom tried talking to his father, but they would never answer the door when my mom knocked on their door. So I'm thinking, it can't possibly get any worse, right? He seemed harmless, so I wasn't too worried, and I was wrong. One day when I returned from my boyfriend's house, my mom told me she had something to tell me, but she didn't want me to get spooked. She proceeded to tell me that when she was walking towards the kitchen to get a glass of water, she saw something in the tree move. Our kitchen has a huge window that takes up most of the wall. In front of the window, there's a huge tree. If someone were to climb the tree, you could see into our apartment. Well, guess what? When my mom took a closer look, she realized my neighbor was sitting in the tree, looking straight into the apartment. My mom called my dad over, and when my neighbor saw my dad, he jumped off the tree. At that moment, I felt my peace stolen from me. We filed a police report, but when the police went looking for him, he was gone. It turned out that there were snack wrappers and a blanket hidden in between the leaves of the tree. The police think that wasn't the first time he was up in that jay tree. I couldn't help but wonder how many times he saw me walking around and I had no idea. It's been about six months and I haven't seen him since. His father still lives in the complex but there's been no sight of him. The police haven't been able to find him so I have no idea what happened to him but... I just hope we never meet again. This happened in 2015 when I was 16 and still living in my hometown, a forgotten little beach town in the middle of nowhere that's so remote it's probably not even known by surrounding areas. Basically, there's three things you can do there as a teenager. Go to the movies, swim, or go to this pathetic little place called Miller's Fun Park. 
It's relatively similar to a lot of fun park type things, only a whole lot worse. There's a terrible arcade with broken skee-ball machines, batting cages that probably haven't been used since the early 80s, a pathetic mini golf course, and the most dangerous go-karts you've probably ever seen in your life. Seriously. Miller's Fun Park is on the edge of a field. On the opposite side of the field, about three miles down, is the beach, and across the single street are woods. If our town is in the middle of nowhere, Miller's is practically on the moon. My cousin Emma and I decided one summer night that we wanted to go go-karting. It was around 10 p.m., so we knew it'd be almost deserted, but that was the way we liked it. I picked her up from her house, and we made the long drive down. Once we had arrived and parked in the nearly empty lot, we hopped out of the car and paid for some go-karting tickets. The same people had worked there forever, I swear to God. There was no one there except for a few boys in the arcade and a guy who looked to be in his 60s sitting on a bench near the batting cages. Em and I paid him no mind and went to the go-kart track. Like I said, these carts were incredibly dangerous, so I was focused on nothing but making sure I wasn't going to skid and flip as we raced way too fast around the windy tracks. This is why I didn't even notice the guy walking over to the fence, and why I didn't notice him watching us until we pulled into the lanes after our last lap. He was standing on the other side of the fence, right where I parked. He stared at me with the most unsettling expression, a creepy smile playing on his cracked lips as his dark eyes gleamed. I managed an uneasy smile back, handing another ticket to the guy running the go-karts, who was obviously higher than a kite, and Emma and I went off again. This time I couldn't focus. The dude gave me the worst type of feeling. My eyes were constantly finding their way to the metal fence where he stood, unmoving and watching us every time we were in his view. And the thing that was bothering me the most was we had only bought three tickets. We were on our second to last run and he was standing directly next to the exit gate. I was just praying he'd move before we were done. But of course, no such luck. Our last go came and went and I had no choice but to pull in next to him, unbuckle my seatbelt and get out of my go-kart. I glanced over at Emma a few feet away as I opened the exit gate to see if she was as scared as I was, but she didn't seem to notice as she bounced over and bragged about how she had beat me the last two times. I was barely listening. I opened the gate and the guy stepped in front of me just as I was leaving. Hey there, he said. His voice was dry and he smelled of cigarettes. What are cute girls doing all alone here? My eyes darted over to Emma, who was looking at the dude with both confusion and annoyance. Uh, what? She said, pushing past the gate so she stood beside me. It's so late. His tone was as hungry as his eyes and he reminded me of a snake. Do your parents know you're out? Yes, I answered quickly. They're waiting for us actually. We need to get going. This was a lie and probably sounded like it from my tone, but I tried to push past him anyway. It didn't work. He grabbed my shoulder to keep me in front of him. Nonsense. I saw you girls pull up alone. My heart dropped to my stomach. He had? Are you heading out? Why don't I walk you to your car? He starts inching toward me and I look to Emma for help. With one swift movement, she pulled me halfway behind her and started sizing the guy up. This was pretty dumb as we're both small and, though she's a few inches taller than me, neither of us are anywhere near his size. This guy clears 6'2 easily, but she doesn't seem to care. Actually, we were just headed to the arcade, she says harshly. Her boyfriend is going to meet us here. I did have a boyfriend at the time, but he wasn't coming, and he wasn't even in town. I knew she knew this. The guy's face immediately changes. His smile disappeared and he was now glaring down at me with a look of annoyance in his eyes. I felt myself start to cower. Boyfriend, he says roughly. Emma didn't give me the time to say anything. She grabbed my arm and tugged me behind her into the arcade. The boys from before had already left and the usual girl who worked in there was nowhere to be found. Still, it felt safer than outside. 
We ran to the back and hid behind the claw machine. What do we do? I left my phone in my car. I whisper shouted. There's no way I was going out there alone and the pothead go-kart guy had already disappeared into the small ticket shack. I don't have mine either. I left it charging. She said, face palming. We're just going to have to make a run for it. Are you crazy? He's probably waiting for us in the parking lot. What about the guy who runs the go-karts? We could get him to walk us out. She said. I just shook my head. He's as high as Mount Everest right now. I don't want to risk running all the way out to the ticket stand for nothing. Then we have no choice. She stood up, pulling me with her. Let's go. I swallowed hard, wanting to cry. I'd never been that scared before. There was something so wrong about that guy. We made our way out of the arcade, looking around to see if he's nearby. The park was now absolutely deserted. Emma practically had to drag me to the exit. I was looking every direction, every second, waiting for the guy to come out of the woods or something and pounce on us at any second, but he didn't. Everything was still. Get your keys out, Emma instructed, and I pulled them from my pocket. We were about 20 feet from my car when I stopped, dead in my tracks. What? She whispered. I stared at the car, keys in hand. I had never locked it. I never locked the car, Emma. What? I didn't lock it. What if... I trailed off, but she knew what I was saying. She started inching toward the car and I grabbed her arm to stop her, but she pulled away. I'm just going to peek. If I say run, you run. Her voice is quiet, and I nod shakily. She eventually made it close enough to see inside, but the way she was squinting I knew it was too dark to make anything out. My heart was beating out of my chest. What if he's still in there? What if he jumps out? Or what if we get in and he asphyxiates me like in the movies? All of these thoughts almost drowned out the unmistakable sound of shoes slamming against the pavement. My head whipped around instantly and there he was, sprinting at us at full speed out of the woods. I screamed bloody murder and broke for the car, jiggling the handle as I realized I had locked it. Emma was already on the other side, screaming at me to unlock it. I fumbled with the keys but managed not to drop them as I unlocked the door, flung it open and practically threw myself inside. I had just managed to close the door when he was there, slamming his fists against the window and shouting incoherently. I was sobbing at this point and barely managed to lock the doors as he goes for the handle and yanks on it as hard as he can. Emma was screaming at me to go, and through my tears I shoved the key into the ignition and flew into reverse. He was still chasing us and yelling as I veered backwards out of the lot and turned as fast as I could while slamming on the gas. I was driving like I was still in a go-kart, but I didn't care. I could barely see the road through the flood of tears, and Emma had to grab the wheel several times to keep us from crashing before I regained some composure. Though obviously shaken up, she managed to keep her tears in and be the sane one out of the two of us as we drove at least 30 miles over the speed limit the whole way back to my house. We didn't tell either of our parents about this, and looking back, I wish we had because... There was something seriously wrong with that guy, but we were too scared of what they might say or do. I think we thought they'd blame us somehow, so it stayed a secret between us, something even we didn't talk about until months after the horrifying encounter. Safe to say we never went back to Miller's Fun Park after that. Two thousand twelve was not a kind year to me. I lost my grandfather on March sixteenth, and then my boyfriend of three years decided to break up with me ten days later in my grandparents' house. Late April, I decided to do what most mid twenty somethings do, and I set up a dating profile. I talked to a few people, one of whom was the creepy EMT, who for the rest of the story I'll just refer to as Noah. Noah was, if you haven't figured out, an EMT. He lived about 15 to 20 minutes away from me. Initially, things were great. We had great conversations, we had a lot in common. We texted all the time. 
He seemed like a genuinely kind, caring, wonderful person. So after about two or three weeks of calling and texting, we decided to meet. The actual date itself wasn't bad. We went to the movies and then went for coffee. It was after the date that things started spiraling. Suddenly, Noah's in love with me. Suddenly, Noah wants to marry me. Suddenly, he can't wait to tell our kids our love story like How I Met Your Mother. I was using How I Met Your Mother as a crutch to get through my breakup. He told me we were like Romeo and Juliet, that we were destined to be together. Every conversation we had for six days after that one date was like that. It creeped me out. He went from this sweet guy to this overbearing, forcing marriage and kids down my throat, and we barely knew each other. But it gets worse. So I decided that I'm going to let him down easy. I try to treat people the way I like to be treated, but in hindsight, I realized that this was not the way to do it. I invited him out to the subway. Oh yeah, I know. By my apartment. I was trying to tell him how I wasn't over my breakup, how I wasn't ready to move on to a serious relationship and definitely wasn't ready for marriage. He took this as I just wanted to casually date him and he took the position of he'll wait for me. It gets worse. Somehow we wound up at my apartment. It was so awkward and uncomfortable. He kept trying to make out with me, despite me telling him no. So he would stop, mess with one of my cats, and then try again. At one point I moved to my recliner, thinking that I would stop him. Nope. Noah took that as an invitation to sit on my lap and try to kiss me. Yes, that's right. You read that correctly. Thankfully, my sister, who was also my roommate, called needing to be picked up from work. But the story isn't over. That night, or maybe the next, I decided to send him a message on Facebook. I tell him what a wonderful guy he is, how any woman would be lucky to have him. But I wasn't ready to be in a relationship and I wasn't going to be seeing him anymore. This led to a barrage of messages from him about how he loved me and how could I do this to him, we have something special. Then, when he realized that I wasn't budging, it turned to how he knew I was just like all the other women. Then, when that didn't work, he pulled the old I'll end my life card, but it wasn't any run-of-the-mill threat. Noah here told me that he was going to get really drunk on margaritas and drowned himself in his bathtub. Not knowing if the dude was legit or not, I called a welfare check on him. You might be thinking that this is the end but it's not. About a month later, he saw me at the local community college. He followed me all over campus. A mutual friend sent me screenshots from his Facebook where he talked about how he saw me and should have had his way with me right then and there when he had the chance. His friends were agreeing with him. It was pretty chilling. Somehow, that's still not the end. In the fall of 2012, I took a job with the local outpatient medical health clinic as a receptionist. A few months later, a girl named Rose started at a different office. Next thing I know, there are these rumors about me and how I broke Noah's heart, how I cheated on him and how I can't be trusted. People I never met were talking about me and my dating life. Eventually, Rose came to work in our office and Noah was there all the time. He was always staring always following. It was deathly creepy. I dealt with him until December 2014 when I left the clinic, and thankfully I haven't seen him since, and Rose, if you're still with this guy, I hope you're safe. I'm working in a carousel in a shopping mall, and this mall is known for being like the third biggest mall in Europe. The first time I worked here, yeah, because the carousel is owned by my parents, so when I had free time, I'd go here and work for a few hours like after school. I was 13 and was not really used to the Parisian life. I came from a small town in the south, so it was really weird for me to be here. But one day, a guy, maybe 20 to 30, was sitting on a bench and looking at me. He seemed really nice, and I first thought that he was a parent or something, looking at his child. But he was completely alone and only looking at me. I awkwardly smiled and said hello, thinking he needed some help. 
He kept smiling, and that's where I started to be scared. But I kept doing my work, looking in another bench to make him understand that I was uncomfortable. And maybe five minutes later, he moved, sitting on the bench that I was looking at. He was not really smiling and looked kind of disappointed. So I started looking up, because people could look at the carousel from there. When I looked down again, like ten minutes later, the guy was gone. I thought he left, but he was still looking at me from the first floor with that freaking smile. He stood there for an hour and continued changing so I could notice him. When I left, he followed me, so I told my co-worker to accompany me until I got home, and that was incredibly creepy. He came back in random days, and it had been a maybe six months since, and he never came back. Later that year, I had a pause and decided to go to the nearest bookshop, as I always did, and I found a book that I liked, some Tolkien book, I don't even remember which one, it was a really beautiful book. And a guy, maybe 15 to 16, looked at me and made a Tolkien reference. I laughed and just left, you know. 20 minutes later, the same guy was on a bench next to the carousel and looked at me. I smiled and he came to see me and asked my number. I said I couldn't give my number to strangers, but he insisted. I then asked him his number and told him that I'd text him when I was done with my work. I never texted him. And he came back like two days after that, but... I didn't see him. I noticed him following me when I was in the same bookshop. I was moving randomly to see if he was really following me, and he was. So I walked towards him and asked why he kept doing this. He then said that he was in love with me, that I reminded him of his ex-girlfriend and really wanted to know me. I said that I was in a relationship, and he said that it was okay. It could be a third wheel. So I said that I would text him whenever I'll feel like it, and he left. Maybe a month after that, I was going to a famous convention where I was cosplaying as a random maid. I was holding a free hugs cardboard sign with some random drawings on it. I was with two friends and we were having a lot of fun when, out of nowhere, someone jumped on me and hugged me. It was the same dude. We called security and he kept screaming for bloody murder that I was the love of his life and that he would end his own life if he couldn't have me. Apparently he asked my coworker why I wasn't here, and she thought he was a friend of mine and said I was going to a convention. He came and searched for me the entire time, and I never saw him after that. Also, he had my number because my coworker gave him it, and of course, I blocked him. Now, the third stalker was during December 2018, so I had two jobs but in the same shopping mall. A guy, again maybe 20 to 30 years old, with long hair, was sitting on a bench next to the carousel and kept on looking at me. He sat there all day, and I noticed that he was sometimes raising his phone and moved the phone in my direction, as if he was taking pictures or filming me. I was 15, by the way. So he wasn't supposed to take pictures of young people, plus the way that he looked at me was just so weird, and I even caught him licking his lips while looking at me. I felt really uncomfortable but kept on working and didn't say anything. The next day, I was working at my other job, which was another carousel actually. It was here just for Christmas holidays, you know, and I didn't see him. But when I left my job and was waiting for my parents to get ready so we could leave, this guy sat next to me, like really close, and asked my number. I said no, and he looked down, disappointed almost, and asked, Are you working tomorrow? I replied, I don't know, why is that? Because I like your body. He stood up and left. I was paralyzed, really. And the next day I told my coworker, Lionel, another coworker by the way, it was a Romanian guy, about what had happened. I couldn't sleep that night and was really paranoid about everything around me. Then I saw the guy and told Lionel to ask him to stop following me like that. He came back with a huge smile, saying, and I'm really not kidding. It's okay, you two can go on a date. Apparently the guy told my coworker that he was a friend of mine and was messing with me. He said he was really shy and was playing this game so he would have the confidence to ask me on a date. I was feeling so strange as if I was going to fall or something, I stopped working this afternoon and told my parents. They told me to stay with them and immediately 
tell them if they would see the guy. When we were leaving, I swear I saw the guy with a hoodie under the rain looking at me and taking pictures of the car. The next day, I was with another coworker, Marie. She's really protective. She's like a sister to me. And I saw the guy on the bench next to the carousel. When I told her, she ran towards him and yelled at him stuff that I couldn't hear. But I could see the guy's face, and it was priceless. She came back with a big smile, and the guy left. Apparently, she said that she knows where he lives, and if she saw him around me for a second, that she'll blow his brains out. Thanks, Marie, for sticking up for me. I was 15 years old at the time and out to a weekend afternoon movie with my friend. We were really early, so we decided to take a look around at a nearby toy store to kill some time before the previews began. I was strolling absentmindedly down an aisle by myself, looking at toys I felt too old for when I heard an odd whistle. If you've ever heard the iPhone notification chime, then you have an idea of the sound I heard. I thought nothing of it. Maybe it was someone's phone and moved through the aisles, eventually meeting back up with my friend. We walked around a bit more, talking and laughing, and I heard that whistle once again. Being preoccupied with my conversation more than anything, I still didn't pay any mind. On our way out of the store, I heard the whistle for a third time, but much closer, practically right over my shoulder, and I whipped around mid-sentence. A man stood there, grinning from ear to ear in a strangely sinister way. The smile didn't fully reach his eyes. He was a bit on the small side, scraggly with long hair tied back in a long ponytail. He had a tattered black t-shirt which hung loosely off of his thin frame in a bulging black drawstring backpack. Hi, he said, stretching his lips even wider around his contrastingly bright white teeth. As a teenage girl, I was no stranger to the attention of older men, but something about his persona and approach set me on edge. Still, I was taught to be polite. Hi, I responded tentatively, taking a step backwards and away from his intense stare. I noticed you around the store and thought I could get your opinion on something. He unfurls a crumpled, stained copy of the toy store's weekly ad and pointedly stabs at the Barbie doll selection with his index finger. See, I'm looking for the perfect doll for my niece, and I just have no idea which one to pick. What do you think? He looks up and smiles, but his eyes are dark pools of nothingness, devoid of any real interest. This one's nice, I say, pointing to a doll at random, hardly looking at the ad. Wow, thank you, I really appreciate that. Hey, has anyone ever told you how pretty you are? You must go to the gym often. What gym do you go to? Taken aback by his abrupt stream of rehearsed sounding pickup lines, I say thank you in a forced laugh. I'm young and so is my friend. Our inexperience and his strange approach keeps us frozen in place. His eyes bore only into minds and his grin, wider still and deeply disconcerting, never fades from his face. Hey, do you want to be friends? I'd like very much to be friends with you. You know what friends do? They take pictures together. Let's take a picture together since we're friends. He holds up a red flip phone with the front cover held together by a rubber band. He activates the front facing camera and before I can say anything he leans into me, face uncomfortably close and snaps the picture. He looks at it briefly, smiles and pockets his phone. There now, we're friends, he says matter-of-factly and turns his gaze back to me, appraisingly. Stupidly, in a horrified daze, I nod. So where are you from? Where are you going after this? What do you like to do? My friend puts her hand on my arm and I suddenly break from my stupor. We have to go, my dad's waiting, I say and we turn to go. My last but not final glimpse of him is with his head cocked to the side and that wide smile spread across his face. His eyes now flicker with something I can only recall as amusement. We turn our backs and as soon as we get far enough away, we run. 
Fast forward to a year and a half later, I'm in my junior year of high school and on the early morning city bus headed to my first class of the day. The bus is packed and I squeeze my way to the back, reaching out a hand to grab the pole as the bus breaks sharply. I hear a whistle close to my ear. When I hear it again, I adjust my earbuds in my ears. Why isn't that person answering their phone? A hand closes right above mine on the pole. It is too close and our fingers brush, but the person holds their hand there almost intentionally. I move my hand and glance up and into the broad smile of the creepy man from the toy store. Cold chills shoot down my spine and I grip the pole even harder under my knuckles, turning white. He tilts his head, still smiling his toothy grin and says, Hi, friend. The bus is so jam-packed that there's nowhere else for me to go, so I turn my body as far away from him as possible, hoping that playing dumb would work in my favor and he would go away. He leans closer still and says, Hi, do you remember me? I shake my head no and lean as far away as I can in the tight space. He frowns and looks suddenly angry. No? I know you. We've met before. We're friends. I shake my head again, looking down, pretending to be engrossed in my music player. Maybe if he didn't get a full look at my face, he might think he had me confused with someone else. No, I have your picture, he says and reaches into his drawstring bag, pulling out his red flip phone held together by frayed rubber bands. All the while, I'm thinking... If he sees me get off at the stop to my school, he'll know where I am every day and can find me easily, but if I get off at a random stop before my school, he could get off with me and I have nowhere else to go. He's still scrolling through his phone and I'm imagining all the other girls' pictures he might have on there when he asks, So what school do you go to? I think about saying mind your own business, but remember his angry frown from before and give him the name of another school. It doesn't really make sense because this bus only goes past one high school and not the one I told him, but he nods at this and says, Hold on, I have your picture somewhere here. We're friends. The bus pulls up to my high school and there's nothing else I can do but to get off. While he's still preoccupied with his phone, I lose myself in the crowd and run all the way to school. I'm shivering when I get to my first period classroom and I can hear the blood rushing in my ears. I asked my boyfriend to take the bus with me every morning for the next few weeks and I change up my routine going to and from but I don't see him again until two years later and I'm a sophomore in college. I am taking the bus home alone after a late night out with friends when I heard a weird whistle. Enough time had passed that I don't feel much alarm and exit the bus at my stop. It is completely dark out and I am one of the two people who get off. Then from behind me I hear, Hello there, do you remember me? I turn around and it's him again. It's hard to make out his features in the dark, but I instantly remember the tone of his voice, recall the whistle, and the tilted head and the wide toothy smile. I see what looks like a backpack strapped to the front of his chest. No. I say and start walking faster, heart racing, wondering how fast I can run in these flip-flops. I hear him picking up speed behind me and I dare to glance back. I glimpse him starting to run at me, his hands in his backpack, dinging around for something that I don't want to know. He is angry now, smile gone, and he shouts at me, So you want to be that way? I start running, and I don't stop until I get home. So I'm a 22-year-old female and I just moved into this apartment complex in the heart of downtown Baltimore. Tonight was my second night living here and I went to do laundry that was on the lower level of the complex, kind of like the basement, and decided to use the gym that was also on the lower level while I wait for my clothes to get washed. So I'm in the gym working out and it's a small room with not much equipment. I was the only one in there and I see this guy on the hallway outside looking at me. I ignored him and continued working out until he came into the gym and gave me a thumbs up and said, Good job. I smiled and said thank you. 
He then comes into the gym and starts the treadmill, and I didn't want to be confined in a small space with this guy, so I went to the laundry room, and my washer was almost finished, so I waited and texted on my phone. And a few minutes later, that same guy came in, and he went to do his load. We were the only ones in there. And then he came up to me and showed me his phone, and it was on Google Translate, and it read, You are beautiful. I said thank you, and he continued to translate for me to read. He's from Saudi Arabia, and he barely spoke any English, and he was asking if we wanted to be friends. I have a hard time saying no, so I just shrugged and said okay, and he asked via Google Translate for my number. I gave him a fake, and he called it right in front of me, and of course my phone didn't ring. He continued to call, and still nothing. He told me to wait there and ran back to the elevators. I started to get a bad feeling, so I left the laundry room. I waited on the other side of the hallway, passed the elevators, and turned the corner where he wouldn't see me and texted my boyfriend what was happening. The elevator door then opened and the man comes out and I heard him go into the laundry. I had this gut feeling telling me to run, and I'm never a frantic person or anything, and I don't get spooked that easily, but I just had a really bad feeling. I pressed the exit button to unlock the door that leads to the outside and it wasn't budging. I turned around and saw him head into the gym from the mirror on the wall and knew he was going to check this side next so I kept frantically pushing the button and the doors unlocked and I ran inside. I walked around for 10 minutes on the phone with my boyfriend telling him what had happened and went to the lobby of my complex and asked the front desk lady if she could escort me to the laundry room. She said yes and we went. The man wasn't there and I put my clothes in the dryer and she told me to come back and get her when the dryer was done. 45 minutes later, the front desk lady and I went to the laundry room and guess who was in there? The man. He smiled and was about to say something until he saw who I was with and became quiet. I got my clothes and we left and the guy left with us too. We all got in the elevator, with the lady in between us, and her and I got off on the lobby floor so she could show me where the other laundry rooms were on the other side of the complex. I thanked her and went on my way. I waited for the elevator to come down and when it did and the doors opened, that man came off and held the door open for me. I said no and told him I would wait for the next one. I didn't want him knowing which floor I lived on. He got off and was pacing back and forth and huffing and puffing. As soon as the next elevator opened, I got on and he tried to get on with me. I immediately got off and he was like, Come in. Come inside. And I said no and he started to get really mad and started to walk towards me. I booked it back to the lobby and to my luck, the front desk lady was already heading my way, telling me she saw what had happened on the security camera. She escorted me to my room and made sure I got in safely. I'm so thankful that she was there. And this probably wouldn't have happened if I just cut the conversation short with that man. I have never been this freaked out before and have never felt this unsafe either. Even though he didn't necessarily do anything wrong, it was just the vibe I got off from him. I'm going to get a gym membership that's a few minutes walk from my building and use the laundry room on the other side of the complex just so I can lessen the chance of having to ever run into that man again. I'm a 21 year old female, and this was around June 2019, and I was doing a closing shift at McDonald's that I work at in town. I live in England, and originally from Scotland. We close up at 2am on weekdays and 3am on the weekend. It had been a Saturday night shift, so I was finished and out the building by at about 3.15am roughly. When this happened, I was living about a 10 to 15 minute walk from my work in a flat that was mostly taken up by students. I didn't have money to spare to constantly get taxis and I had been walking home at night for the past year with no incidents so of course I didn't think anything differently of doing it again. Majority of the walk was fine and I was about 4 minutes away from the flat when I noticed a guy just standing around near the corner I had to turn to get home. I am wary when I see other people but usually they're drunk and mind their own or just ask for directions or it's a homeless person as there's quite a lot in the city I live in but at that time of night again they usually keep to themselves. 
This guy was dressed nice but casual, looked around mid-twenties, well-groomed, tan skin, and this really strong-smelling aftershave. He obviously was a regular at the gym too because he had a muscular figure and didn't seem to be too drunk by the looks of things, but who knows. I tried to keep my distance, but he approached me and started making really casual conversation, asking me what my name was, complimenting my accent, and asking where I was from. I stupidly engaged with him, but gave him a fake name and made it clear I wasn't up for a chat. I should have been firm with my words, but I was way too introverted and shy to speak up. Even my boyfriend complains I talk too quietly sometimes and I struggle to be direct with people. Throughout the whole conversation, he was always giving me this unsettling smile and would try to touch my arm or play with my hair, which I made as clear as I possibly could that I didn't approve of, not that he was even listening. He would just say something along the lines of, but you're just so pretty, not flattering at all when it's a man who won't take no for an answer. This guy asked me for a hug and even though I refused him as politely as possible, he did it anyways. I froze up a couple of seconds before I moved away which thankfully he let me do. He was being extremely creepy at this point and tried feeling over my sides as he hugged me which gave me even more alarm bells ringing in my head. I told him I had to leave and as I was walking away I heard, I'll walk you home, where do you live? Unfortunately I had nowhere else to go but home. Nobody else was around and it was too early in the morning. My roommate was also back at his own house as he went back home every weekend. I had a hold of my keys in my pocket and just hope once I got to the building I could find a way in without this guy being able to invite himself in. I refused to walk home but he followed me anyways, walking about 8 to 10 feet away from me as I was speeding up at this point but caught up as I crossed the road. I don't know why, but I decided to go the long way to get to my building, which is an extra two minutes, so not that long, and as I was approaching the flat, I felt this horrible sinking feeling in my chest. The door to the building closes really slow at first before slamming shut, so I knew even if I walked in, he could potentially follow me inside, and that puts me at even greater risk. By this point, he was begging to be let inside. He said he was extremely thirsty and wanted some water, but... I told him my roommate is sleeping, a subtle way to try to deter him by showing I wasn't alone, but that didn't seem to faze him. He was trying to be touchy and just kept pleading with me to be let inside, but I kept my ground and said no as best as possible. As he was talking to me, I managed to use my fob on the door and only open it enough to carefully slide through, however, he was right at the door and I didn't want to make him upset, so I apologized and told him no once again. Luckily, he had to move away from the door as someone wanted to get into the building. The guy entering the flat asked if everything was okay when he saw me, but I stupidly said everything was fine. That did give me a chance to move away from the door and let it close once the guy walked through. He either worked or lived here, but I wasn't sure. I didn't even look back to the guy. I just ran up the stairs to my flat as fast as I could. I didn't get any sleep that night and from that moment on I made sure to always have money aside for a taxi. I think I walked home maybe once more between June to October before I moved. Really scary stuff and I'm just glad I never saw him again after that. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r let's read official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all these stories in long compilation form and save huge on data located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and remember, it gets worse.